One of the most interesting things we saw at CES this year was the Haptics VR gloves. Ian talks to the CEO to find out more. Hi, I'm here with Jake Rubin, the CEO and founder of Haptics. Tell me about your product and what you're showing here at CES. Yeah, so we're here at CES, we're showing off two things. We're showing off our uh, Haptics gloves DK1, which is our um, high-end haptic VR gloves. And we're also showing off our telerobotic system over here. Basically, this is the lining of your gloves. It's exactly. This, uh, these tubes, that miniature tubes, that are able to send air down each tube to actuate each one of these little modules and basically have them function like pixels, you described them? Exactly, it's kind of like a haptic display. So just the same way that um, a visual screen will have pixels that change color, we have pixels in this material, over 130 of them on your hand, that uh, we can dynamically vary their displacement, their pressure, um, and create anything from the sensation of a ball rolling around in your hand to the sensation of a vibration, um, really anything you can imagine on the skin. Before we get a consumer product out of this, what, what are gonna be the first uses for this technology? Yeah, so, you know, every time I talk about this technology, you know, we love the consumer VR market, we believe strongly in the consumer VR market, but we wanna make clear to people this is an enterprise product today. It's a much higher price point than the consumer market. It's focused on, for us, design, training, and telerobotics. Our main customers are medical, military, industrial, um, automotive, aerospace. So it's not consumer today. As far as the path to get there, the, the choice that we've made is to start at the high end, to really get all the capabilities that people want in a haptic glove. And, you know, of course, that brings us to a bigger form factor and a higher price point than the consumer market wants. But over time, we have a pathway technologically to substantially reducing the cost and price of components. For us, the main thing is valves. That box you're seeing over there, it's full of valves, and those are what control the airflow into this system. And, you know, as a small startup, initially, no one wanted to make custom valves for us, so we were stuck with, you know, off-the-shelf industrial automation style valves. They're big, they're expensive, and we made do with that. As we miniaturized the system, you know, we started with a 200-pound box, we've gotten down to something that's in the low tens of pounds. I can't talk precisely about product roadmap, but I can say we're going to continue to dramatically miniaturize that as we build custom and optimized valves to the point where we do ultimately believe we can put this all into a wearable wireless consumer product. It's not going to happen overnight, but it will happen. So when I go try this out, can you explain the demo here that I'm specifically going to be experiencing. So it's going to be, uh, I'm going to be in a VR headset, mm -hmm. using the hands, uh, and then I'm going to be sort of projected into a robot and using a robot? Yeah, so you'll have two demos. You'll have the, the VR demo, which has been pretty widely covered before. It's a farm environment. You can run your hands through wheat and feel each individual blade across your hand. You can have a little fox play around your hand. What's new here at CES that we're showing off is our Converge Robotics Group collaboration. We're working with a couple of other companies. Uh, Shadow Robotics, they make these amazing uh, biomimetic robotic hands. Um, SynTouch and uh, Tangible Research that make these uh, sensors that basically sense, they're the inverse of our skin. They sense tactile interactions and they can project them onto our skin. And so that will allow you to basically embody the robot and feel what it feels. It will move how you move using our motion tracking and then feedback data from those sensors into the glove. So this is the first time you'll really be able to have accurate sensation in a telerobotic hand. Very cool, can't wait to try this out. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. At a conference like CES, these white gloves go on first for sanitary reasons. In the full VR demo, the haptic gloves slip on and the Vive pucks on the back track your position. Every item in the scene produces a different haptic feeling, including raindrops and a fox running around on your hand. There wasn't actually a fox running around his palm, of course, but the pressure moved around to different spots enough that it felt like a believable illusion. This isn't like a vibration from an Oculus touch controller. This is a precise pressure in specific parts of his hand. The robot demo doesn't happen in a VR headset, at least not yet, but it is an impressive demonstration of a potential use for haptics. Ian said in his demos that he'd feel a little push against his fingertips. It was hard for him to describe precisely because his brain would fill in the gaps that would make it feel like he was doing something he actually wasn't. Pinching a cup between the robot's fingertips could almost make Ian feel like the edges of the cup were in his own. Ian also tried stacking rings on a wooden stand. He said he could feel the exact moment a ring hit the pole, which let him know when to let go and not to grab onto the item harder. However, it didn't always go as planned. Head over to uploadvr.com soon to check out Ian's full impressions. And don't forget to subscribe and watch the rest of our CES coverage.